trail's a bit wet out today. Well, today's going to be a great day to play in the shed. Go and do some pulse motor testing. Okay, well, it doesn't look like the rain's going to stop. It is a bit noisy in the shed, so I hope you can hear me. And, well, we can't do anything about the rain. Today we're going to look at our simple off-the-shelf SSG circuit um, by well, John Bedini, I guess. However, this diagram is by course of that man. And today we still use this because it is one of the simplest diagrams for people to follow, especially those just starting out. Now, why this has come about? A long time ago I went through this once before, and amongst other things, as you would have seen on my video previous to this one about the high voltage going through our charged battery. My friend Mr. Tolly tried endlessly to explain to us why the high voltage was travelling all the way through the battery and not being squashed by the battery as I had always thought it had been. So now that's sorted out, it opens up a whole can of worms. This simple little circuit has now become really complicated. Not in the way of building the circuit, but in the way that it works and what is actually happening inside it. Now for those of you who haven't seen Polly's last video, and I don't know how I missed it because it's been on the forum for about three months or more now, but last night I sat down and watched it, and I will warn you, it's about four coffees long. So grab your first coffee and make sure the missus keeps them coming while you're watching it because it's got a lot of useful information and a lot of research he's done on the way that this system works and the way he sees that it's working. Now, I'm not here today to prove him wrong. I am here to show you what I have found and the reason I made this circuit here some time ago. Now for you, those of you who know, <laughs> this circuit caused a whole lot of trouble. And uh, quite a number of us ended up getting booted off of our forum uh, for this very reason. However, we have a new home and the reasons behind it will leave behind. And for any of those of you that are getting into this thing or are into it but not getting the help you need from other forums you're more than welcome to come and join ours I will post the link to our forum in the description of this video ok we're well back to this now on YouTube you will find animations of current flow through both the trigger and the run windings um, I believe they are wrong and I will show you today and explain to you why I believe they are wrong. And the rain is starting to come down a bit harder so I hope you can hear me still. It's my belief as the magnet is approaching the coil we get a small charge and it's a positive charge sent back to the primary battery. Now the animations and what Polly was saying in his video to his research that um, it is his belief and others as well, most others, that that positive charge actually goes through this diode and back through this resistor and into the pot. So there's two things you have to look at here and that is one of the rules of current flow is that it will follow the path of least resistance. So this path here we have 100 ohms to start with and whatever you have your pot set at is the resistance if it follows that path. If it follows this path here, the resistance in one of these batteries, let's say 
just using as an example a 7 amp hour battery, 12 volts. I have measured at about 1.1 to 1.2 ohms using Ohm's law test to find the resistance within a 12 volt battery. Now you may think that the circuit is open, but it is not once it starts running. And this is due to induction of the coil, which I will try and explain to you now. When you make a coil for a pulse motor, SSD in this case, what you are actually making is a one-to-one -one transformer. Now this is where Ohm's law goes missing a little bit because of the way this system works. As we know, when the transistor fires up, the coil, run coil fires up, and when the transistor is once again open, you get a high voltage kickback going into your charge battery. So the 2 to 2.5 volts mentioned that was going through to the base, um, I don't believe to be correct. And I'll show you why now. Um, before I go any further, if both leads are open from your trigger windings and you put a meter across the two windings set on AC spin your shaft you may well get 1 to 2.5 volts only but that is only before your run coil starts firing so what I'm going to do with this um, is I'm going to fire this coil up on the run side with the trigger side left open and I'm going to do that via this pulse motor here simply by connecting one side to the positive lead of the battery and the other side to the collector. So I'll go ahead and we'll start the machine up now. By the way this is the run battery voltage not really important I've just been charging the battery on this machine for a while and wanted to keep an eye on the run voltage. Now we'll just leave it hooked up. This meter here is going to be measuring all our test voltages. So our machine's up and running. And what we're going to do now is grab the white lead and we'll hook it on to the positive of the run battery. Somewhere here, there's a bit of room. And then we'll grab a green lead, hook to the other side of the run coil, and hook that to the collector. Right, so what happens now is that coil's running. As you can see there. So now our trigger side is open. Now remember the trigger side is the one thought to only produce about 2.5 volts. So what we have here, great little test tool. Grab yourself a 400 volt cap, around 400 to uh, 500 UF or microfarads to start charges up quick. Um, this one in this case is only 200 volts by 100 UF. That will do for what we're doing here. Um, positive side one end, we put a diode facing in the right direction. Otherwise, uh, in other words, so the charge can go into the positive side. Diode on the other side, so no positive charge can enter the negative side of the cap. That's our bit of test equipment. So now we'll hook the meter up, quick, correct way around. And at the moment, the meter has 1.5 volts in it. So now we're going to hook what would be our trigger coil up to this cap and get a peak voltage that's coming off of that trigger coil.
So in this trigger coil, um, at the moment we have 20 volts coming out of it. Um, and this is why I say that the voltage from the trigger coil is much higher than the 2.5 volts because we have 12 volts around the outside of the coil. Now this is where things get funny. Have almost twice the voltage coming off of the trigger coil than we have going into the run coil. Now the reason is because it should be twice the voltage however because we have our run coil on our pulse motor hooked up to a charged battery that is restricting the current flow through our other coil here thus only making the 21 volts but it is a lot higher than the 2.5 volts that we assumed was going to the transistor so like I said as soon as this machine starts up everything changes our trigger coil now you can see it's starting to climb now that's pretty interesting because the motor's starting to pick up speed as well So for some reason, we've had something else strange going on in here. We now have 27 volts coming off of the trigger coil. Which is double what's going into the motor. And this trigger coil is in absolutely no way hooked up to the battery other than through the transformer effect. We are pulsing 12 volts into this coil and on the secondary coil, even though it's a one-to-one -one winding, we've got nearly 30 volts coming out the other side. So like I said, this simple little circuit does some really strange things. So I hope that explains that little bit about only having your 2 volts or 2.5 volts going to your base it is a lot more than that even with your resistance in there okay so enough of that one anyway I will once again discharge the cap because now we're going to look at the positive charge going back to our run battery rid of all this rubbish we don't need before we have a short and smoke and fire. Okay, our cap's got 0 0.5, 0 0.6, a bit of recovery voltage coming in there, as per normal. Negative lead onto the negative side, positive lead onto the positive side. And this one's a bit dicky, so we'll use the other end. And we have them completely back to front, so we'll swap them over. Otherwise we will have smoke. Right, red lead is on the positive side of the cap and also the positive side of the diode. And vice versa with the black. We are now going to put the positive lead to the negative side of the run battery. I'm going to take the negative lead and put it on the start side of the trigger coil that goes to the pot. Now as you can see there, we're already up to 25 volts that's being pumped into that negative side of our run battery. And like I said, up said this is all set up to only let positive pulses into the cap. And as you can clearly see, that positive side is going to the negative side 
of the run battery. And we're now up to 27 volts. Now what's interesting about that is it's very much the same as we got off of this one, even with the resistors in place. And the trigger coil being a complete loop through the resistors. And yet still we are getting that positive pulse back to the negative side of the battery. How much current is in it? Okay, well that's what we're going to look at next. We'll disconnect our cap. Here we have a 12 volt LED. 2, 4, 6, 8, 1.5 volt globes. It is off the top of a four wheel drive whippy aerial that they put on their four wheel drives when dune climbing and all that so other four wheel drives can see them coming over the dunes before they hit them. Positive and a negative side. We we'll hook our black one up to the negative. The positive side of the LED is going to be hooked to the negative side of our run battery. There's enough current to drive that LED quite brightly. So this is a problem we don't want. But wait, it gets worse. We get our cap back. Now the only reason this isn't pumping up to a very high voltage is simply because the trigger coil um, is being squashed by the charge battery in the way that the run coil back EMF is already going into the charge battery so the trigger coil will not produce that much. So like I said, the current will follow the path of least resistance. If I disconnect the run coil from our charge battery then the trigger coil will receive all the back EMF that the run coil was receiving because our path of less resistance then becomes the cap. So I'm going to sit this here so you can see it and I'll hold it. So we've hooked up our cap, positive side to the negative side of our run battery, negative side of the cap to the front side or the start of the trigger coil. I'm now going to disconnect the run battery or the charge battery rather for a brief period of time and you will see that the back EMF switches from the run coil into the trigger coil. Hundred and fifty six volts. And now going straight to the negative side of our run battery. So like I said these circuits, although very very simple, um, have a whole lot more to them than spinning the rotor and charging a battery. There's many many things happening here and here for different reasons. Um, so what we have to do now is go and eliminate some of those things that are fighting against us. And one of the major things is that high voltage spike back to the negative side of our run battery. Now I did this a while ago with that circuit and as you've seen right there, this is the very reason I made this circuit. Perhaps the high voltage from the trigger coil and send back to the run battery positive side rather than having it go to the negative side. And the reason this could be done is because it disconnects the run battery from the run coil when this transistor here switches off and then the high voltage spike is free to go back to the run port or back to the run battery. So I hope that explains things a little more as to what I think is going on and I showed you that it is actually happening and the amount of current and voltage of a positive kind 
that's actually getting sent back to the negative side to the run battery. And like I said, that is not good. That makes the system inefficient. There have been others replicate this system here and they've had, uh, well, let's just say very good results. And that will leave right there. But like I said, if you are interested in it, all these circuits, this one and many more that other guys have come up with, even additions to this one, are all on our forum. And I will put the link to our forum in the description. Feel free to come and join and start finding out all the little details about a circuit that is so simple. Cheers from the Tin Man.